Welcome to the Victorious Living Podcast. You're about to hear real stories of real people who have discovered the real hope of Jesus Christ. I'm Christy Overton Johnson, the founder and publisher of Victorious Living Magazine. Since 2011, I've had the privilege of sharing the most amazing life stories. I never cease to be amazed at the life-transforming power of Jesus Christ. Today in our podcast, you're going to go deeper into these amazing God stories and hear from those who have overcome incredible odds and discover how they found a life of freedom. You can discover it too. I trust that you'll enjoy today's conversation between our host and our special guest. Thank you for listening and be sure to share the hope you hear and the mission of Victorious Living. Welcome back to the Victorious Living Podcast. I'm your host, Brooke, on the mic with Parker Bird today. Parker, how are you doing? I'm doing great, doing great, feeling good, and uh, glad glad to be back doing everything I was before. Yeah, I'm super pumped to share your story. Um, It's absolutely gut-wrenching, but also there's been so many miracles that have happened, and I know that those who are listening are going to be encouraged that our God is super big, and He's not limited by our physical limitations or anything else that we have been through in life. So I'm super pumped about that. Um, Parker, you go to East Carolina university and you play baseball. Um, but tell us a little bit about that journey of where you're at now and the epic crazy injury that had occurred to you in 2022. Yeah. So I committed to play baseball here at East Carolina in ninth grade. So I've been committed here a uh, pretty long time so it's been childhood dream was to play here um, both my parents went to school here so uh, I just always loved East Carolina and always dreamed of playing here and then I finally committed and everything was going great and I went to summer school uh, before my freshman year and I uh, was having a great time and then uh, the very last weekend of the entire summer me and a couple of buddies uh, decided to go down to uh, Bath, which is probably 40 minutes from here. And they had this, a, a river house, and we we're just going to have fun tubing. And we went down on a Friday. And that Friday, we had a great time. Went out on the boat and did everything we were going to. And then that Saturday, I was supposed to take one of the guys back to Greenville. And uh, I told him I had, I had a car there, so I told him I could do it. There was no big deal. I didn't, I didn't care to stay there for two days. And uh, so that morning, that Saturday morning, he got a text or a call saying, hey, Miles, thanks for volunteering, but we don't really need your help anymore. So uh, we kind of got pumped and excited, and the guys kind of convinced us to go back on the boat. So uh, we stayed there another day, and uh, me and a guy named Dixon Williams got on the tube first, and uh, first ride went good, and then – the driver decided to go a little bit crazier second one and Dix ended up falling off and then I ended up falling off as well. And then I was swimming back to the boat cause I was closer than Dixon was. And, uh, as I got within 10 yards from the boat, I was using the, the rope to kind of help myself get in a little bit easier. And the driver accidentally put the boat in reverse and the propeller got wrapped around the rope and, basically sucked me under the motor and uh so the propeller hit both of my legs um and my left hand and then uh the guys acted very quickly miles jumped in immediately Uh, my girlfriend was there at the time and she was acted really quickly calling 911 calling my parents and guys on the boat were waving down other boats because they needed help and they kind of knew what to do but not really um we're just we're just 18 year olds uh just having fun and um so they were waving down boats because our boat couldn't move because of the rope being caught up in the propeller. So they waved down boats. The first boat stopped, and uh, they told them the situation. And the boat was like, sorry, we have kids on the boat, on our boat, and we can't really help, but here's a first aid kit. So the guy's like, this isn't really going to help at all. Parker's legs are shredded. Um, his hand's pretty bad, too. So um, they waved down another boat, and that boat stopped. And the only reason they were there at that moment was because one of the couples had gotten into an argument and one of them was like, hey, can you just take us back? And so they were on the way back, saw us, and they stopped. And uh, they stopped and they were like, of course, we'd help. So they transferred me to their boat. 
And on that boat, uh, one of the ladies, she was a nurse. So she was doing everything she knew, was trained to do, uh, time more tourniquets around my leg, uh, trying to get a bleeding to stop. So that boat took me to the marina there where there was an ambulance waiting on me. And then uh, they took me into the ambulance. And obviously they were trying to stabilize me as well. And then uh, the ambulance took me to Washington Hospital which was probably 10 minute drive at the time. And uh, they had called ahead for a helicopter and they airlifted me from straight from Washington to ECU health. And so I was in the hospital for four weeks. Um, I initially did not have my right leg amputated, but on August 4th, uh, I had to get my right leg amputated just due to uh, lack of blood flow going to my foot and just from the initial uh, shock and incident or accident that the blood flow was going down to my foot, but it wasn't coming back up. So we uh, had a choice to either try to continue the medicine that I was on, which wasn't working at all. And the infection could spread and just get really, really bad or just amputate my right lower extremity. So I decided to do that on August 4th. And then I stayed in the hospital all the way until August 20th, and my accident happened on July 23rd. So I was in there for basically a full month. Um, so, <laughs> excuse me, but um, so I was in there for a f full month, and then got out, and it immediately was like, hey, my my goal is to play baseball again, no matter what. That's always my been my dream. Uh, I don't I don't realize or don't understand why I would ever quit. So I just kept on going, uh, did everything I could, did, did, did a bunch of PT, still doing it to this day. And uh, last year I was obviously a freshman in college and I kind of took uh, a gap year from uh, baseball and stuff uh, because I was part-time in school. So my athletic clock wouldn't start. So uh, it kind of worked out really well. Yeah. And uh, so last year my eligibility didn't start for baseball, but this year it did. So wow. uh, now I'm, I'm back with the team full time. Um, I'm back practicing, playing, doing everything those guys are doing. So it feels really good to be back, but, yeah. uh, there's still, still a lot of work to do. Yeah. Well, you are like a little over a year past all of this. So have right. you been able to like mentally process this? Like, do you feel like you are, you do you still have your days where you have to kind of process what happened and grieved what happened? Um, luckily I have a very good support system around me that, uh, ever since, I mean, my, all my life, but, uh, ever since my accident, even more people have been a part of our circle. That's just really helped me keep my positive attitude. Uh, my, my parents and family have done a tremendous job just supporting me my, my whole way. But, um, I mean, I do have times I'm like, wow, it's like really happened. Mm -hmm. But it's never really sad anymore because I realize that it's for the better and that God does have a plan for me and that it's, he has a plan that I have no idea what how many lives I can reach now. And now I can use this as my platform to show his work and to show his his mercies. So, um, I just kind of view it as a blessing now in disguise. And at the time it, it definitely, it seemed like a blessing, but yeah. kind of aftermath that we're seeing now is, I mean, it's pretty incredible just to see what he's doing, like just through my life. And I'm just really just a, a plain old division one baseball player. I mean, nothing, nothing special about me at all. Just had an accident and just love yeah. God. Yeah. And I think like, that's like the, the hard part for people in their walk with God is when bad things happen, we yeah. think God's doing it to us. And that's just not the case. Right. Like God, like even in your verse right. that you love in Jeremiah 29, 11, like he doesn't plan to harm us. That's like not in his plan. Right. Um, mm -hmm. but life happens and we live in a broken world where there's accidents that's and right. there's cancer and there's miscarriages and there's tornadoes and there's war. And so we right. live under the sun of brokenness and but because we have the lord and because we are in relationship with him he will work things out for our good and right. i love that because i used to get that a little switch where 
bad things would happen. I'd be like, God, why did, why are you doing this? Or, you know, why? Well, I mean, and it's like, yeah, he yeah. allows things to happen, but he's not a puppeteer trying to make bad things for you. We have right. choices and people have choices and there are mistakes. Um, and so I love that in your story written and spoken, uh, you've just given credit to God using a bad situation and turning it for good. And I think right. that's just such an important and healthy way to view things. Um, I also would like to ask, so the guy that was driving the boat and put it in reverse, did you or do you struggle with resentment at all? Or do you have a ton of like forgiveness in your heart and right. you move past it? No, yeah, I just, I mean, I totally forgive him because, uh, I mean, God doesn't want us to hold grudges at all. And I might know that he made a simple accident and I shouldn't hate him for that because, yeah. I mean, I've made a ton of accidents in my life and, I mean, nothing that severe, but, I mean, he just, his 18-year-old kid just trying to have fun, and he didn't realize what he was doing at time. So, I mean, I have, have no anger towards him at all. I mean, I still talk to him on occasion. We weren't a, extremely close before, so it's, right. like, kind of hard to be extremely close now because, I mean, we still have the kind of same relationship, honestly. And yeah. uh, I know that, I know his views about me are, are good, and he uh, never would plan to hurt me like that. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't have any hatred towards them at all. And I realized that, Hey, like he made an accident. There's, there's no reason to base his whole entire life off of it. Yeah. And, and for those that are listening, you know, whether you're behind the bars or not, if there's somebody in your life that you can look at and point to of like, wow, they were a catalyst for an injury or a catalyst for a crime or catalyst for anything negative in your life. I think it's super important. And we can learn from Parker that, holding resentment and bitterness is not only harmful to that person, but also harmful to you. And so God has been so rich in his mercy and forgiveness to us. And I need to hear this because I can be bitter about the smallest things. Like it's mm -hmm. not even a boating accident. I could just have a minor that, inconvenience. That, that's and, just human nature. Too. Yeah, it's human nature. And yeah. I'm, I could sit there and pack on the bitterness and, and add it on. And then it just infects me and infects the people that I love. So I love that you've been able to not harbor any resentment, but like, Hey, it's an accident. It was all just chaos in that moment. And God was able right. to be glorified in it. So Parker, what, um, what is your hat? I should say it this way. Has your view of God since this accident changed? Um, that's, that's a really tough question because I, mean, I honestly get asked that a good bit, but because I, I view myself before my accident. I, mean, I was a Christian. I went to church, and I was kind of just your basic Christian guy. And I was, I, mean, I was living a good walk, but now it's just, I mean, he just means so much more because he saved my life. And I knew he would, and I never had doubts in him, but just the fact that I know now, like 100%, that he is real and that he does, he does everything for the good is just, I just have a different outlook on it now and I'm more appreciative and um, I'm honestly walking a better walk with him now just because uh, that's who I want to be. And I don't want to leave any doubt of going to hell and I just want to hundred percent go to heaven. So um, I do everything I can. I read the Bible every day. Um, just really just trying to walk the walk he wants us to and just try to be like him. Like we all, all should. Yeah. And I love that. He's, again, so rich in mercy and so rich in forgiveness that our righteousness right. and our right standing or righteousness, for lack of better words, is our right standing with God. Um, all of that has been taken care of because of the cross. Like we can't yeah. buy it. We can't earn it. We can't negotiate it. It's been given to us freely and we all have the opportunity to accept that. But once we accept it, then life with Jesus kicks in and now you get to really experience it. And I feel like you've been able, you know, our sufferings really do bring us closer to him. Um, you know, he's always close to us. He's always revealing himself to us. He's, he's doing that through kids. He's doing that through sunshine. He's doing that through joy, but also there's something to be said about when you're suffering and when you feel like you're in this Valley, that all you really have is him. And so it just right. makes the richness of the good parts of your life even deeper. Um, yeah. And so I was talking to somebody recently. And for those of you listening, I, I hope this encourages you too. But, 
you know, we've all been surrounded at some point or even been these people where we want everything the world has to offer. We want relationships. We want money. We want fame. We want whatever it is. And but it feels empty. But when you have the real thing yeah. of who Christ is, and then you get to experience some of those things, you can, you know, have kids and get married yeah, and buy a house and do the things that are human. That is still exciting, but none right. of it matters unless you have the real thing. And so I feel like that's exactly what your story is. You had baseball, you had talent, you had a future, and now it just means more because of the richness of the mercy that God showed you during this yeah. chaotic time. Um, so what's up next for you? What would you like to see in your baseball career? Um, really just get back on the field playing uh, competitive games again in, in division one. I'm a, I'm blessed to be the first division one amputee with a prosthetic leg. So just really just paving the way for other guys and other people with disabilities, really just, uh, to them that they can do really anything they want as long as they work hard put god first and just uh just put their mind to it and um just really just trying to encourage those guys and not not only those people just everybody um just trying to show anybody they can do whatever they want and um just even though if you may not be the most skilled uh, you still can control your effort and control how hard you work so um just just trying to be an inspiration now and just get back onto the field and uh, I've kind of have a different outlook now on baseball. I mean, every, baseball was literally everything to me before, and now I realize that, hey, it's just a game, and uh, we're just blessed to play, and this this time's going to end soon. Or not soon, but, I mean, in our lives, uh, baseball's going to end, but uh, God and other things are going to be around for forever. So um, just really just putting him before anything now. Yeah. Do you have connection or do you communicate with other amputees or athletes with impairments? Do you have like a connection? Oh, yeah. Um, I do. Yeah, I have actually several. So um, the very first one, and he's been an extreme supporter of me, uh, Chad Porter. He lives in Wilmington now. He got into a boating accident as well. Uh, he was water skiing, I think, and he got – basically ran over by boat and kind of the exact same story. Um, so he, whenever I got my leg amputated, he, my dad reached out to him and Chad was there the next day and wow. just showing support and showing that, Hey, you can do anything you want. And I mean, that dude's, uh, he's, I mean, he's older now, but he, he's still playing basketball with his kids and he's still, still an athlete. So, um, and then, guy named Landis Sims. He was born without hands or feet. And his goal, his, uh, goal was to play uh, varsity baseball in his high school. And he did that without hands or feet. And uh, so that's pretty pretty phenomenal. And then I uh, also know, know this girl. Her name is Mackenzie Green. She is, uh, I think it's D3 soccer player in Virginia. But she got into a car accident. And then uh, I think it was her freshman year of college as well. And I think she's a year older than me, but um, but she actually came back and played uh, soccer with a prosthetic leg. So wow. um, I've definitely had had a lot a lot of connections. Uh, as I mean, it's a whole new world. It's a lot a lot of people that you you don't even realize. And I see amputees all the time now. And um, yeah. before my accident, they just were normal people, and I didn't even really realize them. But yeah, um, so it's just it's really cool just to see how many connections I've, I've made with, with that, that side of the world now. Yeah. And also with, not that we live for worldly success, but there still is some success that happens in sports. You know, you think of like Bethany Hamilton and just right. that wild story. And she was so yeah. young when that happened. And, <laughs> you know, the Lord has definitely shown through her and God is shining through you and all of these stories. And so it's like, I, you're blown away by how much God can to, can restore something in your life, even if it doesn't look the way you thought it was going to look, but you can right. also like experience a level of depth and joy that you didn't think you could. So I think that's, that's right. exactly what your story is. And before we end our episode, I love to ask each guest what their favorite quality about the Lord is. I know there's a ton, quality. but what's um, one of your favorites? 
probably his forgiveness because I mean, I'm I'm a sinner as, as much as anybody else and the fact that he he died on the cross for us, uh, I mean, ultimately gives everything. So prob- probably probably definitely his forgiveness cuz I mean, no matter what, he's he for, your sins are forgiven because of his ultimate sacrifice. Yeah, I love that. There's um actually I screenshotted this morning so it's on par for what you just said but their lyrics and I wanted to read them um it's called it's a song called at the cross by I don't know if you've heard of Trip Lee he's a Christian rapper but he's straight up a theologian but it says (laughs) at the cross where I left my flaws and my goals lose my whole and I gave up all control I left it at the cross if you're looking for my shame and my gain in my stage, you'll find none of it remains. I left it at the cross. And I love that because we can Definitely leave right. all of it out there, everything. like everything out there at the cross. It right. can be our shame. It can be our gain. It can be whatever, but we realize that none of it remains at the yeah, cross. Yeah. And so that is what our faith is in. It's not in anything else. It's not in our works. It's not in the law. It's not in anything. It's in what Christ did on the cross and that he has deemed us worthy because he is worthy. And that is just like you could spend, which we do our whole lives trying to grasp that. And so I love that. Parker, thank you so much for joining the Victorious Living podcast and for sharing your story. It's been an absolute joy hosting you today. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me on here. It was really a blessing. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to Victorious Living Podcast. Did you know that you can help incarcerated men and women experience victorious living? Visit victoriouslivingmagazine.com to find out more information. Are you an inmate in prison who needs encouragement? Write to us at Victorious Living, P.O. Box 2751, Greenville, North Carolina, 27836. Every inmate who writes to us from prison receives personal correspondence from our team, quarterly devotions, as well as their own quarterly subscription to Victorious Living Magazine.